Hi, I'm John Storms, and this is part three. It says part four, but it's really part three. This is part three of actually setting up the Lightorama show. So in the previous videos, we said that the Lightorama, so Lightorama software has two main functions. The first function is to be a sequence editor. It's kind of like a software development kit. You can get everything set up. And the second part is actually running the show. So in the first video, we talked about the show editor. And in the second video, we talked about the schedule editor. So now we're going to actually talk about how you actually <coughs> start up the show. Now, one thing that you want to do before you start is they have this option for compressing sequences. Uh, might not be a big deal if uh, you're running a smaller show um, up to a couple hundred channels, but when you start getting into pixels, you'll notice that the load time on your sequences gets very, very high. For example, let me just open up, uh, let's see, where's my wreath test? So my wreath test has, and this is not a lot of pixels, you know, in terms of a big show. I have my tree, so I've started it up, and I have my trees, and I have my wreaths, um, and the, let's see, there's 13 trees with 125 pixels each, and then I have two wreaths with 125 pixels, and then I have the cactus, which has 100 pixels, and then the rest are the Lightorama channels, and there, it just finished loading. So you see how long it took to load? Um, so what you can do is you can compress your sequences. Now you can compress them from here in the sequence editor. You can go to File and Export as Compressed and it will shrink it for you. Okay, and the little hourglass means it's working, it's crunching away. And this is a very fast computer. So you saw how long it took to load. This is a computer with 32 gig of RAM and a solid state drive. So this is as fast as it's going to get for for right now. <clears throat> so by compressing that sequence it goes a lot faster. Okay. Now what I have here is you can see there's another tool. Um, so let me start up the control panel, the Lightorama control panel, and it says it's already open because I had the sequence editor open. So I close this and you should see this little light bulb down here. Okay. Now I click on it, it gave me the status window. It says it's hooked up to the DMX listener, and it's because I use some SAN devices and I talked to it via DMX. <laughs> okay, so the other thing you can do is you can right click on your light bulb and it gives you access to all the utilities, and there's actually a sequence compressor utility. Let me close this so I don't confuse myself. Close that because it's ugly. Okay, so here you have some options. You can say compress the entire schedule and say go. And what it will do is it will go look at what you have scheduled and it will compress all the sequences in those schedules. Or you can say compress a single show and you look it up here and you pull it up and it will compress all of that. And then you can compress a single sequence. However you do it, it's fine. You compress it uh, and it will load a lot faster. Because if you ever open up one of the LMS files, which is the sequence file, you'll find all sorts of stuff that's not actually needed to run the show. What you need is that channel section, and you also need the mapping where, of where the channels actually go. But you'll see all sorts of tracks information. Um, there's all sorts of things in there for the actual analyzer, you know, the little window that's built into the, uh, the S3 software. It was there originally with the S2 before the standalone visualizer. And lots of other stuff that take up a lot of space, and they can strip that out. Then they can actually, you know, bring it down into uh, a form that will load faster. And then there's another option you can do that will help optimize your show. I mean, optimize the load time. You come up into the show editor. <clears throat> and here, what you do is in your show, you say sequence loading. Sequences are loaded. Sequences are loaded before any are played. So what me that means is that with the show saved with that option, when the show starts, it's going to take a couple of seconds to load all of the sequences up into memory and then play. So even though I had these very big sequences, or I wouldn't call them very big, I would just call them big these big sequences that in the sequence editor took a couple minutes to load. When I did the load sequences before and the compress, my 
the sequences started so fast that it was actually a little bit awkward. The strobes wouldn't stop firing before uh, before the next song would finish, and it was like the one song would finish, and then bang, the next song was right there. So I actually, when I did the musical section, I actually added a two-second delay in between my songs. So it's very effective. I was really worried about it this year, or last year, when I uh, added the pixel trees. Okay, so that's something you want to do um, before your show starts. Let me go back to my slides to make sure I don't miss anything. Okay. Uh, yep. So we talked about the export, the compressed sequences. And that, like I said, that's important. Now, when I, I usually keep a checklist, usually it's just a handwritten checklist. So I remember to do everything, turning on the show, I mean, turning on the show computer, making sure everything is power. I have my sand devices controllers on another switch. And then um, I like to, you have to make sure that your control panel is open. Nine times out of ten, if for whatever reason your show doesn't work, it's because the control panel's not on. So then you open up your status window, and the status window looks like this, right? So if you right-click on it, this is the one application that comes up, and it will tell you what's going on. If I come over here and click Enable the Schedule, it'll say Enabled. You see it's initializing. It tells you everything you want to know about what's going on with your show. It says that my current activity, and it's actually thinking it's playing a show, right? So, very nice to have. You can, if there's problems, sometimes you'll see error messages in here, and you, that'll help you work them out. If you don't know what they are, you go to the Lightorama Facebook page or to the forums, and uh, people there will be happy to help you out. Um, so we open up the window, you enable the schedule, and then off you go. I keep my show computer in the garage, and I have a FM receiver out there as well, because I can't actually see the show starting, but I want to be able to hear it. You want to make sure that the volume is up on your computer, you know, all those sorts of things that uh, will uh, give you some trouble. Now, just to make sure everything is working right before the season starts, it's a really good idea to kind of do a dress rehearsal. Make sure that your show actually starts up. So you have your, your transmitter and everything else, your controllers, your show computer, your show, your schedule, and you actually take it for a dry run just to make sure everything's working. Out. I, I, it, I believe almost every year I've forgotten something important for that big night when we do the kickoff, and doing a, um, you know, a dress rehearsal a couple hours before saves you from, you know, stomping around the yard cursing in front of all your neighbors, friends, and family. Okay. Now, if you do find yourself in a situation where your show isn't working, like I said before, make sure that the Lightorama control panel is working. You should have this light bulb. If you don't have this light bulb, then you have a problem. Then you want to make sure your schedule is enabled, right? This is where you come down here, right click, and click on Enable Schedule. Um, you want to make sure, and then if you still have problems, maybe you're on a wrong COM port. You know, maybe the COM port from last year is not the same COM port from, from this year. When you plug in that USB dongle, you know, it's using a virtual COM port, and I'll, there's a few things that can really affect what COM port it shows up on. So you might need to pull up the hardware utility and hit auto configure to make sure you got the right, uh, the right COM port going. Um, and then the, if things are still having problems, don't forget to check the status window, see if weird things are going on. I've seen some weird messages in here in the past. Like, for example, if your music file's in the wrong place and it can't find it, it won't play the song, but it will tell you that's what's going on here. And like I said before, if you're still having problems, use a lifeline. Call, uh, call for some help. Okay? Uh, last time we talked about show on demand, but I want to show it again here. So if you want to run your show, you can say, I want to run a show right now. And I actually use this quite a bit. We have people that just, you know, neighbors are walking by. Last year there was a little redheaded girl with her grandpa and it's hey, you want to see the Frozen show? And so what we would do is we picked it up. You can say start as soon as possible. You can say start at this time. When I'm actually doing my big kickoff show, I will actually say start at 7 o'clock and kick it off that way versus using the, uh, the scheduler because I'm only going to run it that one time. And then for the, the rest of the loops, I use something else. And you can say play until you tell it to stop, or you can say play until a certain time. And then in the last video, part two, I showed you how you can make, uh, make it so that a song, a sequence actually plays through just one time. Uh, but I'm not going to repeat it here. But I didn't show that, you know, you can say, you know, have a start and end time, or start as soon as possible and play until, until you stop. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. <coughs> 
And last time we also talked about if you do a show demand and you have a show that's already running, it will preempt the show that's running and replace it with this. Now it will cause that show to, uh, it'll finish whatever song it's on, but then it will kick this um, in over top of it. So a lot of times I'll have something like this. Here I have static all on with some pixels, and that's something that runs in the background. And what I'll do is I'll take my frozen show and I'll say run this, and as soon as it gets to the next uh, seek, uh, the next, um, as soon as it runs through that little sequence, it'll pick this up. So usually within a couple of minutes. All right, so that's show on demand. Back to the slides. These slides are, oh, I have them posted, and the, the link will be in the uh, description below in the video. Um, we talked about the show on demand, stopping the show. So if you want to stop the show that's running, and right now if I click on that, you can see that it's actually running. I have a couple of options. So I can say disable show gracefully. And what will happen is, you see here, it says it's entering shutdown mode. Shutdown mode means I'm going to finish playing the song that I'm, I'm currently on in the musical tab, <clears throat> and then I'm going to move over in, if you're looking at the show editor, then I'm going to move over to the, the list of shutdown sequences, and I'm going to play the shutdown sequences in order and then stop the show. So depending on how your show is set up, this could be anywhere from you know a few seconds to several minutes. Could be If you have a lot of stuff in the shutdown, could be half an hour. <clears throat> And sometimes, you know, the problem is, you know, there's people outside making a big ruckus, being very rude. You're worried that your neighbors are going to call the cops or the HOA and get you shut down, and you just need to let things cool off. So what you can do is, you, or you've really screwed up and you need to just stop the show, you come over here and say, disable shows immediately, and bam, it's down. So you can see here it says disabled, the lights will go off, the music will stop, and your show is down. Now, if you want to start it back up again, when I had this happen, you know, if somebody was outside honking or they decided to play their radio too loud, and it was just getting a little too crazy, I would turn the lights off, wait for most of the crowd to dissipate, you know, once people started moving away. Then you come back here, right click, and then re enable the schedule, and then the show would start back up again. Okay? <clears throat> so that's. That's pretty much it for running the show. Let me double right click here, see if there's anything else interesting we want to talk about. Um, the verifier is actually kind of a cool tool. So what you can do with the verifier is you can say, you know, verify entire sch schedule, entire show, or verify a single sequence. And oops. And you go and you pick one. So let me go find, go pick one of my 2012 sequences. I'll say hallelujah. Okay. And you hit verify. And so what it's doing is it's going through and it's doing all of these little checks. Okay. Now, and then it will give you uh, warnings. Like let's say you used the same unit number and channel ID on two different channels by mistake. It will tell you here. Here it's giving me some warnings, right? Here it's saying I have some channels that are completely off that I don't use for anything. And you know, you come in here, it's a leg lamp. So I configured a leg lamp to be part of my show. I've never gotten around to using it. Radio sign, that really shouldn't be there at all because I use that in my background sequence. Then here I have some new channels. These are some dummy channels I use for sequencing. Likewise these, I use a lot of dummy channels in my my setup and then these are just ones that channels that I've disabled because I'm not using them I've moved things around but I can't take it out of my master track because it removing things from your master track screws things up you know you can listen to the sequencing videos to, to learn more about that okay so um, but you know if you did something really bad it would uh, show it up here in red it's kind of an interesting thing to do um, I've never actually had something be perfect let me do the entire schedule just to see what happens. I wonder how long this will take. See that look? This is taking a long time to load. Just That's just because it's a really big sequence. But anyway, it's a, it's a handy thing to do. You know, it can show you some interesting things about your show. Um, but I don't think people use it very often. We talked about the status, the visualizer. 
I, ha I haven't used a standalone visualizer in a long time. Um, setting that up would be its own little video, so I'm not going to cover it here. Um, of course, if you want to say, I really want to make sure my show isn't going to turn on in the middle of the night, you can actually unload Lightorama. That, un that basically turns off the control panel, turns off everything. So that's it. Uh, this third video was a short one. Basically, all we were talking about was how to actually physically stop and start the show. And uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the series. Hopefully it's useful to you. And I uh, hope you have a nice show. That's it.